Look, Mr. Listener, you got to remember that you hired Why the Trades to build you a well-rounded view of these industries, and you're just going to have to let us do our job. And after almost 40 shows, you know we've got our load bearing straight. So just relax and know that we don't need to change order a thing on this episode of Why the Trades, the podcast that dives deep into the minds of these successful people that chose the trades as a career pathway. I'm Clellan Russell, your host and advocate for the trades. I'd like to thank our sponsor, The Window Ninjas, founded and operating right here in Louisville, Kentucky. For over 25 years, still offering the finest quality on residential window and gutter cleaning. I'd also like to thank the man who has agreed to design, bid, build, and talk to us about his world of commercial general contracting, accepting all of his quotes. We we appreciate and welcome Mr. Jeff Walston. Hello, Jeff. Thanks for being here. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. Heck yeah, yeah. yeah I, uh, excited to be here. Heck yeah, yeah. We're excited, man. It's, it's it's again raining outside, so I assume you're you might be rained out. You're probably always doing something. Yeah, there's always something. Always going on. something, and, yeah. and there's always there's always a ceiling yeah. on something that you can get in and stay dry. Absolutely. Uh, well, listeners, I have, uh, again, Jeff Walston here. Um, I'll let you actually introduce yourself and say the name of your company. Yeah, so uh, I'm Jeff Walston, everyone, uh, with Primus Construction. Uh, we're commercial general contractors here in Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah, and you so. just do commercial, right? Yep, just okay, do commercial. Okay, that's what we want. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. Uh, because actually we, and we'll get into this in a second, but listeners, as you know, for, for all of you that have followed every single show, we don't have a whole lot of commercial uh, talk on here. And it's not, we don't avoid it, but it's just, I guess, be people I know. I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, who knows? Yeah. Uh, but uh, this is the first time you and I have actually met in person. Um, so, and I'm an inquisitive by nature, which is why we sit here. Uh, tell our listeners, including myself, a, a little bit about yourself outside of the work, and then we'll j- jump into the work side. Um, for me, outside, it's just, uh, I got two kids at home, uh, my wife, and so uh, trying to find that harmony of work life. And, yeah. Uh, so it's a lot of time with them yeah. um, outside of work. Uh, and your hobbies are now biking with your kids. Yeah, yeah. So we're uh, recycling now. Uh, my kids love it. Um, we've been doing that for I don't know how long now. Three weeks. So like on, out, out on the roads. Yep. Yeah, well, is that well freaking? neighborhoods? Oh, okay, yeah, neighborhoods. We, we stay to that. They're yeah. not quite there. They're only ten <laughs> that and eight. Freaks me out, man. Yeah, That's they're only ten and eight. Uh, yeah. And, okay. And, with people nowadays, I know, man, looking at their cell phones, Texting. And driving. Yeah, I know, it I'm freaks not, me out. Yeah, neighborhoods is good enough; they can kind of yeah veer off. And that's yard. good cardio, yeah. yeah. And uh, and you're a tra- you're a traveler. You're you're and, yep. and we'll get into that later. You've done a lot of traveling through South America, which is awesome. We'll yep. talk about that. But you've been uh, traveling a lot recently. Yep, absolutely. Cool. Yeah. And what, what would you say one of the coolest places you've been have been has been? Um, I really like Costa Rica. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They have a lot of uh, microclimates there. The culture is yeah. pretty interesting. Uh, just people are nice. The very opening, yeah. especially to Americans. Uh, very educated there, so yeah. a lot of them can speak and even stumble. Even if they can't speak real well, they can stumble upon English and and get their way across. So yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, and you speak Spanish. Uh, uh, yeah, poquito. Yeah, a little, yeah, yeah. A little yeah, just yeah, a yeah. little. And we'll so. talk about that here shortly yeah. too. I, well, actually, I went to Costa Rica uh, for uh, a while back, and I learned oddly I had to have a wisdom tooth taken out there because oh, I was nice. there for six weeks. As soon as I got there, but apparently Costa Rica is one of the dental capitals of the world. Yeah, uh, and you know what they charged me for that wisdom tooth? Sixty bucks. Oh wow, <laughs> so that was that part was nice. Um, all right, well, Jeff, I want to jump into, because you are a very busy, very, very busy man. In fact, yep. when we were chatting, <clears throat> you had that look on your face that I've seen on my face many times, and you, I think you said, quote, I'm a worker. Yeah. I work a lot. Um, what's some advice, especially with two kids, wife, trying to get home, trying to travel, <clears throat> running your gigantic business, work-life balance, give our, especially our younger listeners getting ready to go into the to the workforce, some advice on that? Um, with any great thing and that you do and to get more work done and to be productive uh you need a schedule uh, and just like if you're going into the trades you're going to work off a schedule and that's with anything uh so schedule that personal time in right on your work calendar S- calendar yeah. right so when someone calls you and say hey uh you know can you come and do this well no uh, you know other engagements i have some other you know work thing going on they don't have to know it's personal right. or yeah however um to take that time if not you're going to wake up in 30, 40 years and realize, you know what? All I've been doing is working. And I know. You know, that's not what we're here for. We're here to help each other out. And yeah, work, I agree. Work some, but we're also here to play some. So Yeah. So you. So at this point in your career, you don't ever compromise that, that personal calendar? No. 
Yeah. Yeah. But it sounds like some advice that you have, which is good, is just tell your clients it's not personal. It's just like, hey, I've got other work yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. So th they don't say, well, why are you taking your personal uh, yeah, time? Yeah, I but know. Yeah. Yeah. So th that's just the easiest for me. Yeah. Um, and it's worked out grand. However, my younger self uh, did not take that advice. And Although you look super young now. Yeah. You don't uh, look very old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, I'm 20 years in the business now. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but that first year, you know, I just worked all the time. Cause oh, that's, man. That was with a work ethic uh, my family gave us. And so, uh, that's all we did. That's all I did. Yeah. And uh, your uh, family, were they in the trades? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, well, outside of the commercial GC, I'm a, a fourth generation uh, concrete finisher. Oh, wow. That's yeah. cool. Uh, and why, how did, why did your family gravitate towards the concrete of all the trades? Um, that, so they were from Southern, Southern California. Uh, I'm not sure why they chose right. concrete itself at the very beginning, but uh, I know uh, my great-grandfather, since he was in it, they just all kind of um, just uh, kind of – just gravitated to that. They all wanted to be in the family business, so we yeah. all got into it. So I did that for quite a long time. Still yeah. do it today if I need to on a project. And Oh, uh, I, yeah, I guess you could yeah. definitely manage that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, we need to get some concrete. Maybe we need to talk to your family about that. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I, I haven't had any concrete people in here yet. Yeah. I'm always looking. Uh, yeah. Well, it's a good industry. It um, is. And, and would you say that that interest, industry is pretty – recession proof i know a lot of these trades are i mean is that more subject uh, to the, it just the depends on it actually depends on the scale yeah uh, in my opinion um there's always going to be needed concrete but whether it's large or very small so right uh, it depends on if you're in commercial or residential on that side so in that world is one better than the other if people are considering getting into that is is it um it depends on how fast you you get you want your money that, yeah that, yeah that, that would be yeah my, so in commercial, I mean, you can work, you know, wait 30, 60, even 90 days. Yeah. 91 uh, days. Yeah. A lot of times. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, so it, it's, it's one of that. It's like, can you survive? Yeah. To those, you know, three months. Let's yeah. just put it that way. It's yeah, three yeah. months. And, and that teaches you cash flow. It does. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Um, and we'll get into that too. Yeah. All right. So, uh, again, I'd mentioned earlier, you know, you're one of the first real commercial guys we've had on you're you, we've had two general contractors at residential. Yeah. You are a very first, uh, commercial general contractor, but we don't really have a whole, we haven't had a whole lot of commercial talk on this show. So yeah. that's one reason I was really excited to get you on. Uh, but why, you know, why, you know, and may, again, maybe it's just the people I hang out with, but yeah. like, it seems like in general, there are less commercial, uh, um, contractors out there. Yeah. Why is that? Is it harder? Is it more expensive? I guess it's cash flow. Does that scare people off? Uh, cash flow is a big one. Uh, right. uh, people that try to go into commercial quickly, if they don't understand cash flow fully, once they jump into that commercial side, you are um, now waiting for money. Right. And you have to have those pockets in right. order to keep it the flow going. Uh, I mean, if you look at it from residential and commercial as money goes um, – as a commercial GC, you might go up to, you know, an average project might be thirty thousand. Well, when well, you're in commercial, you know, now you're looking at three hundred to yeah. five hundred yeah. to a million yeah. dollar projects, um, and you got to have that cash flow. And you have to pay your subs. You have they're, to. Pay they're, them. <laughs> yeah. you're, they're not waiting. Yeah. <laughs> they're no. that ninety one days. Yeah. Uh, so, and this was not on our agenda, but advice on cash flow. What What would you if someone wanted to consider this job? How, uh, do you, how do you handle that? Uh, so there's a lot of good information out there. Um, it, if your younger listeners are listening, um, and you're, 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 if you're already in the residential and you're thinking about going commercial, uh, one key thing that I wish someone told me and made me go is go get a business certification. Go take oh, okay. a small class and learn about cash flow. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, fully dive yourself in because it's like uh, training for uh, a sport. Yeah. Um, you're only going to get better if you do it. Yeah. And uh, if you're paying for it, it's going to make you do it. Yeah, Cause yeah. I know how a lot of listeners here, I'm sure you're the same way I was is like, you know, I can, I can figure it out. Along uh, the way. Yes. You just jump in yeah. and do it and just don't ask yeah. questions. Yes. I've done that many times, but I'm going to tell you right now though, you're not going to have the time. Yeah. You're never going to get to it. It's going to be on the back of your to-do list. Yeah. Uh, even if you put it at the top, it's going to drop to the bottom and like, don't pro procrastinate, do it at night. There's yeah. plenty of certifications out there uh, yeah, and learn a little more about it. 
Yeah, that's great advice. So as far as it would just be like a, a community college or, or different, so just any class, any platform out there that offers information on dealing with cash flow. Yeah, I would. Yeah, definitely that. Uh, a little bit of a financials thing too. Um, right. Um, which that involves cash flow. So right. um, I would definitely do that. Um, and then outside of that, you might be managing projects now um, in the residential sector, or even you haven't managed anything coming out of the high school. Uh, there's still project management certifications that you can get. Yeah. Regardless if, even if it's uh, the assistant project management, but get that. So you understand projects. Right fully and how to schedule and uh, how to budget and all of that. Uh, you may think you know that, but uh, once you get into these larger and larger projects, if you don't have that on point, I mean, you could have one good job that comes in, a million-dollar job, yay, you're excited. But, you know, by the end of that job, you could be bankrupt. Yeah. Man, that's scary. Yeah. So you think that's you think the scale is why people don't jump into this more? It sounds like well, it, it would scare me. I think it's two things. It's, it's the – well, three. So the, the scale for sure. Uh, and that's the money aspect. Um, and then networking. Um, it's who you know. Yeah. In the commercial. Heck, uh, more so. You think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, Why? Yeah. Just because of the the, the, um, the property managers kind of thing? Yeah. They're, they So all the property managers and commercial real estate agents and stuff, they already have their, their go-to guys. Yeah. So you're going to be waiting on the wings for them to mess up. And guess what? They probably already been doing this for five to 10 years. Yeah. 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 So you have to be very creative and there's, you have to spend a lot of time networking. Yeah. Um, and so do you still network a lot? Oh yeah. 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 So what are some of the, the, I don't, I don't, I'm not asking for all your trade secrets, no pun intended, but, um, what are adv advice on networking, like some groups or ideas or concepts? Um, so I would look, if anyone's interested in the commercial realm, I would definitely look into any of the commercial real estate agent networking events that are free. Oh, okay. Uh, go ahead. And you can even, there's a CCIM, which is a commercial uh, re, uh, real estate agent network. Um, and it's like 225 for like the year membership. Oh, yeah. You're only going to meet a few times, but that'll actually put you on the list and get you more involved in events. Uh, and definitely go to those. Schedule them out. If you see yeah. them coming up next month, no matter what, don't, don't miss them. Yeah. Be in front of uh, all those guys all the time. Yeah. Wanna, you want to walk in with your, you know, nice smile and a, a logo and your yeah, name yeah. and shake it, everyone's hands. Good and attitude. Make, yeah. Make sure that you're in front of them. Yeah. Because uh, with commercial, too, is uh, I'll tell you this. Um, my first year, uh, I've been doing this in, with this company for four years now. My first year, uh, I, I was serial networking. So I got a lot of people involved and didn't get anything from them. Yeah. But it's like planting a seed. Right. Um, so I nourish that over and over again. And now I'm, I'm getting calls from them who I met three years ago. Yeah. Like, yeah, hey, yeah. I met you three years ago. I know you're doing Isn't that thing. crazy. Yeah. Like, you, take, I, you still got my card. Yeah. It take, <laughs> and it takes that long. <laughs> yeah. It really does. Uh, so it. advice on being patient. Because that, like, as yeah. an entrepreneur, that's something I've learned is patience, patience. Um, any, any thoughts on that? Or how to, how to, how to train yourself? Because I'm a very impatient person by nature. Yeah. Any, any advice on how to train yourself to be patient and, and wait? Um, for me, it's just the, the knowing since I've been doing this for so long. Yeah. Uh, it's just knowing that I those jobs will come. Um, and it's just a matter of uh, reaching back out and networking more, um, yeah. seeing what everybody's doing. Um, I did that today before this podcast and uh, reached out to someone I haven't talked to in 18 months. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, now I actually got maybe a lead to... Oh wow! Yeah, he, and when you reach out, is it via email, phone, text? No, I, it's either uh, it's phone, phone. Yeah. So you call, you still call people, yeah, which is good. Yeah, and it's, you don't see that very often yeah, these I, days. Yeah, I, so I, that's one thing. If younger listeners like, you, you're gonna have to call commercial, yeah. commercial construction, commercial real estate is still in its infancy of getting to technology. Wow, interesting. So, Why? Um, I, I think they're because. The average person that's in the commercial yeah. is older. Yeah, they're in their fifties. Yeah. yeah, and upwards. Wow. Yeah, that's a see. That's already we know a ton of good advice. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> a wealth of knowledge. Yeah, so I would definitely tell them, uh, you know, fill them out, yeah. meet them in person, make the phone call. Yeah, and show up yeah. and to their place, shake yeah. their hand, look them in the eye. Those soft skills, yeah. those yep. kind of things. 
And also, too, I'm going to touch on this, and I think this might be of use to, to some of our listeners. And, and Jeff, I'll, get, I'll be curious what you think about this. I've, I've networked a ton. I've done chambers. I've done b and I'm currently in a and i I'm going to be rolling out of that pretty soon. But I've noticed, like, those systems aren't good for commercial folks. No. It's like, it, it's always, like, like especially because, you know, those systems take a lot of time. There are a lot of times weekly obligations. You really got to put a lot into it. <clears throat> and I've been in, like, a and i group for five years now, and I've noticed the commercial guys and girls come and go quickly because it's like there's just no – resources there do you would you agree with that or have you seen that at all in, in your in your networking um, so I, I was once part of bni um and that's it's again it's you have to have the patient game and yes. you're waiting for it um this last bni that i was in um i was in there for two years and did just, you get anything out of it yeah absolutely oh, okay, yeah. Good, good, good. Uh, but the relationship started and and build because yeah you, everyone you have you have to think it's residential is a little bit smaller dollars on and commercial is a big deal. Yeah. Because you, you, there's all kinds of things that are different from commercial and residential. So p- people have to re- fully trust you before they, you know, go ahead and give you yeah, that, uh, that $400,000 contract. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. they're yeah. like, well, this is a big deal. You got to know what you're doing. So yeah. they want to know that. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. And there's that trust there. Yeah. All right. So, Jeff, what would you say the biggest difference between residential as a, as a general contractor? And I don't mean, you know, I know residential, you work on houses, yeah. commercial, you work on buildings. <laughs> but but outside of that, the, uh, what would you say the biggest difference between you and a residential GC is? Uh, emotions. You're right. <laughs> so explain that. That's, that's the easiest right. thing. So, I mean, it's it's like 90% residential is emotional. Right. Um, as far as with the customer, like the homeowner? Yeah. That they're, of course, all of us at any given time, whether people want to admit or not, you're, you're emotional, uh, decisional. You know, so right. you're, every time that you want to make a decision, some form of emotions involved. Right. Well, within residential, that's where people sleep. That's yeah, that's their that's sanctuary. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every day. So every time they go to sleep and they and they, they wake up, you know, that, that's their that's their castle. That's their sanctuary. So it's all emotional there because that's you know closer to them. But if it's a business, you know, they they leave. They shut the door and yeah. leave. And they go home. Yeah, they, they go somewhere and else. They and mentally sleep. leave too. So, yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. So, um, and that's why they're like, you know, it's, it's money and time yeah. and, and commercial. There are obviously still emotional yeah. Yeah, things yeah. in there to where, you know, they're picking out, you know, finishes and stuff like that. But, uh, that would be the biggest thing. Uh, yeah. No, this, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. No, that's a good answer. So would you say then, uh, that there's more loyalties in residential? Cause I find that like with our window business we've had forever, you know, we don't, we, we don't do commercial anymore. Yeah. And one of the main reasons is that we just you know, a, a pro, you know, a manager, a new manager would come in and cut us out for 20 bucks because yeah. he's like, okay, these guys will do it cheaper. Do you find that in your world as far as there's less loyalties and on the commercial side? Uh, yes and no. It depends on how new of a business owner they are. Oh, okay. As a new business owner, they're all about money. Yeah. Just bottom dollar. They're, but they don't understand the intricacies of like a commercial project on the construction yeah. side. Because that, that leads me to the second one, and it's not just emotion, it's public safety. So, you, yeah, you're not just looking out for, you know, the business owner and yourself or whatever. Yeah. You're, I mean, you don't know how many people are coming through that door daily, a kid, uh, yeah. an elderly person. You, you, yeah. you don't know. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Uh, so you ha- that's why all those licenses and uh, laws are in place for all that in the public sector yeah. so oh, yeah makes sense well that's a perfect segue yeah. um, because we're going to jump into the day in the life of a uh, commercial general contractor um and let's kind of start with well actually before we get into licensing that kind of stuff what does your day-to-day look like like when you get up and you go out um here lately it's getting up at between four and five and Ooh. going work out um oh, okay that kind of clear you are in good shape but man what time you go to bed uh 10, 11. Oh, okay. So you yeah. value sleep, I assume. You, yeah, I mean, I, I wish I could get more. <laughs> yeah, <It> just, <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Um, and there's some days I do. Um, yeah. But there's just so many things I need to get done. And, yeah. And I have to schedule out and oh, figure yeah. out. Um, so uh, so you get up at 4 and 5. Uh, yep. Work out. Work out. Clear my head. That Just so much stress when you do yeah. that. Um, just kind of takes it away. Um. And then I will kind of briefly look at the schedule, which, by the way, I've already did that 
the night before. Right. So I'm sure you probably yeah. dreamt about yeah, it yeah, too. Yeah, 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 point, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's a key too, guys. That's a little tip. Uh, <laughs> do that schedule the night before. Yeah. No, that's but good. in the morning, obviously, um, on the commercial side, like I'm already getting, it could be 7 a.m. and I'm getting texts from oh, subcontractors. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, this happened or this happened or hey, don't forget this. And uh, so checking with the schedule with that um, and emails as well um, before I head out um, for and the then, day. And then as far, I'm curious, I, as of right this second, what's, what are some of the projects you have going on that you're managing? Um, so we have a uh, brewery. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's a newer Newer brewery in town. Pena and beer. What's that? A Pena and beer. Yeah, they, they, that'd be a lot of beer for me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, yeah, um, they. It, it's interesting when you work on a brewery because that's yeah. that's during the meeting. You know, hey, you want a beer? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, beer you meetings. Sample so, the goods. That, yeah, yeah. That's right, yeah. Uh, so that's been a very intriguing process. Um, I've done uh, a few restaurants and stuff here and there. And, right. Uh, never a brewery, so this is my yeah. first one. So it's I've been learning a lot. Um, yeah. Um, so what's one of your what's one of your most favorite projects you've done to date? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, with this company or it just ever? In, just ever? Just as general as far as a commercial general contractor, what's one of um, the coolest things? So that that would be internationally. Oh yeah. yeah, you've done all sorts of cool things. Yeah, there. we'll get into that. Yeah. Uh, uh, dental, I know. Well, we'll yeah, get into that. Yeah, dental labs in yeah. South America and all that yeah. cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. So, what about yours? Like, what you with with premise? What's what's the coolest one you've done so far? <laughs> I have to say this brewery. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was to say yeah, that'd yeah. be my answer. Yeah, right? yeah, it's pretty. It's <laughs> yeah. it's extraordinary how much actually goes into yeah the brew system. Once it's this large, it's pretty good, pretty si- good size uh, brewery. And do you have, because, you know, you think about all, like, all these micro breweries nowadays, you walk in, you can see, you can see all, like, the, the operations yeah. and the, the tanks and all that kind of stuff. Uh, do you have a good design eye for that thing, or do you bring people in for that? I mean, how do you, how do you lay all that out? Um, normally on, so on, in commercial, you normally have an architect. Uh, oh, okay. That's, that's coming on board and helping right. design that. Um, and then they bring in specialists, too, uh, to do, like, workflow and the brewery backside and all okay. that, so. Now, are you responsible for getting your the architect, or does the brewery come in and bring? Uh, so with this one, um, I knew the architect, and so he called me. He said, "I think you would be a good fit." Oh, you know? nice. oh so he got you the job. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, for this particular one, and uh, that way, since you already got restaurant experience, you have yeah. that oh, all yeah. that knocked out. So yeah, yeah. let's focus on the brewery side and get it knocked out, and nice. so that's where we're at. Yeah. So, do you network with architects? Is that another piece of advice? Yep. Yeah. Uh, if you're in residential too, that's that's a key, I think. Yeah, yeah um, I never thought about that. Yeah, architects is a key. Um, they're gonna know everyone who's even thinking about and who's serious yeah. about a project. So, would you say on average, well, I mean, business owners and home, well, let's go with business owners. Do they, are they more likely to call an architect to say, hey, I want to build a brewery, or do they call a general contractor and say, hey, I want to build a brewery? It goes back to how long they've been in business. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, if they're starting out. A lot of times they'll call Ar- me and oh okay yeah. they call you first yeah. starting out all right but if they've been in business a long time they call the architect yeah yeah okay because they because a very good uh, commercial GC is gonna want their blueprints uh, to start out with oh, even yeah. do your, to do a budget yeah um, okay that makes so sense I don't yeah. I don't like to say proposal estimate I would like to say budget anymore so, oh, okay yeah. why just uh, just the fluctuations and contingencies yeah. <laughs> of every type of building yeah. material this possible. This is going to change. This is going to yeah. change. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So have you found an issue uh, on the commercial side, especially with, with supply house or supply line issues? Has that been a huge wrench in your um, – or kink in your plan? Still. Uh, still is a big one. Yeah. A big component of most commercial buildings, so that's a big one. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of lead times in that, but uh, that's why I put contingencies in. Uh, uh, okay. And uh, – Another one I want to say is like when a business owner and I are sitting down talking and stuff, and there it's a there's a lot of time before you even begin work. I know. So there's like a three or four month period. Yeah. That you're it's conceptual, so you're going back and forth. You're planning the architect. Hopefully, at your G, you know, being a GC, you're involved in in that mix at some point, and you're going back and forth before all that. So hopefully, you can get kind of all that going and ordered and everything before you even go because. I mean, that some people are, it's it's crazy how long they're taking. Yeah. Well, even like fuel prices. Yeah. So what's your advice as, as far as dealing with um, that, that fluctuate? I know you said contingencies and you write it in there, but I mean, 
is there a specific contract that people need to know about or a, a method as far as, hey, you know, the steel could be 30% more by the time it gets here? Yeah. Man, th- how do you how do you have that conversation? Uh, I put it, so in my contract, there's a COVID material clause stating about, oh, okay. you know, yeah. I think everybody's felt it and yeah, understand at this point. At this yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. I still have it in there. Um, and then I put a contingency on all my projects. Right. 10 to 15%. Oh, okay. Uh, and I tell them, like, this is gonna. This is your worst case, and this is gonna keep you covered, um, unless something just completely yeah falls you know, apart. Yeah. Uh, and do you find most people are pretty open and receptive to that, and don't give you beef over yeah, it? Yeah, because a lot of times on commercial, they're they're looking for numbers so they can give you know a bank. Yeah. Most of the time, they don't have you know. <laughs> yeah, million dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> right. sitting around just like oh, I'll just do this project. Right, so yeah, they're looking at the bank, so they want a number and. Uh, the banks are finally slowly coming around with that contingency too. And yeah. so oh, okay. they loan up to that, yeah. the highest amount. Yeah. Um, and then that's our budget. So it's like, don't go over that and stick yeah. in between here. Oh, yeah. So, uh, and I know that's gotta be stressful to try to stay within those budgets. Yeah. You know, I think yeah. that would make my head explode. Yeah. Um, but you know, as you get better and better at it, you yeah. just know what to expect. Yeah. Um, so as far as that, you touched on it, licensing, I know, you know, the, the residential, I know at least in Kentucky, um, the, the, to get the license is not expensive, no. um, not super hard, no. but is it, what's the commercial world like with licensing? Uh, same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So if someone wanted to be, where do you go and get the license and how do you get started? Uh, it should be the same. You go downtown and just yeah, apply. apply. For, yep. And is there a difference on, in the actual GC license or is it all just under one? Um, one? In the state of Kentucky, no, no, that's no. that's a big uh, discrepancy that I have <laughs> because that shouldn't be allowed. Uh, yeah, I know because uh, you you do have public safety involved and yeah, you do everything. So it's, everything. I mean, yeah. you think about the electric and yeah, just, well, well everything. you got fire suppressions. You have yeah. Uh, I mean, you, you, there's a lot that goes into it. It's Heck. not there's a lot of systems in the commercial world that a lot of people don't even think about. And you don't have to pass a test right you just apply for the law how does that work i mean it's just um, important to get it right yeah yeah so there's no background check there's nothing you just go in and you just get a license unfortunately <laughs> right. yes well in the state of kentucky you probably know this in the state of kentucky actually there's no roofing license yeah i also do roofing so yeah uh that absolutely blows my mind i learned in the state of indiana there's no we interviewed an electrician yeah. there's no oh. There's yeah. no like. Le- there's no license for that. Yeah, you know how scary that is. That is, yeah. That <laughs> probably freaks me out. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, all right. So you go downtown. You, you apply for your but, license. Yeah. But I assume you have. To, so what if you get? If um, do people look? For, do they ask for your license? Like you know, say you went and got it. I mean, then you start a project. Do, do the do the uh, do your customers say, hey, I need Jeff. I need to see your license. Or how does that work? Uh, typically, no. <laughs> right. that, that's another scary yeah. thing. Because so, and it's nothing against uh, the business owners. It's just. They don't know the right questions to ask. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And they should definitely be asking those questions because yeah. you need to know, like, hey, I'm building a brewery. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Have I ever done this before? before? Yeah. <laughs> right. Did they? Uh, yeah. um, a lot of people, they, they, how they confirm is, like, their residential side. They're like, well, let me see some of your projects. Yes. Uh, so do you keep a portfolio, I assume? And yeah, uh, yeah, we do. Um, I keep a portfolio, not of all projects, just some, uh, depending on uh, what it is because there's our – bunch of projects right um, yeah and i so. think too i think you're right in that like especially with licensing like real basic important things people just assume like well he he yeah. couldn't build this building if he, he did, didn't, yeah. if he didn't know what he was doing yeah he wouldn't be uh, calling uh, himself uh, a commercial <laughs> general contractor if he didn't uh, know what he's doing uh, right that's the scary thing yeah it is man it it's, is uh, it's it's one of those things that uh the education that what i try to put out is i educate you know yeah uh, especially if they're new business owners yeah uh, and that's good. And yeah. that's what we're trying to do on this show oh, yeah. is just let people know, hey, you know, not only to the to our young listeners that maybe want to do this, but possibly people listening like, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I might ask for that license yeah. next time. Yeah. Uh, all right, Jeff, as far as, and I'm not looking for any W-2s or anything, but as far as pay for a commercial general contractor, is it, I, I know a lot of G- residential GCs, they'll make 20 to 30 percent, give or take. Is that about the same, or is it different? Or uh, it depends on the project. Okay, there's a definitely different margins and and, and all over. Yeah, I mean, so it's probably a pretty broad yeah. all over the place. Yeah, it yeah. can go from yeah, I would say up to twenty, but then down to 
I mean, there's oh, there's, okay. there's commercial oh, general contractors that are making one percent on the project. No kidding. I mean, I but assume it's like a multi million million dollar project. All right, yeah. right. Well, that's interesting. So, um, and I guess it's all relative. Yeah. Um, although, I mean, do those multi million dollar projects? I assume they take a lot more time, or do Correct. they? Yeah, uh, a lot and, more time. And you do, and I see you do a, you do a draw schedule. Yeah. If, if you were to get into that, yeah. um, and then and generally, like, just what is is it usually. 20, 20, 20, you know, that well, kind of thing? Or it how depend, does it work? Again, it depends on the project. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a standardized oh, okay. uh, one. It depends on the amount Yeah. Uh, and what we're doing. Yeah, and that's good to uh, know. Because you, you got to balance that cash flow. Yeah, heck yeah, you yeah. do. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so, you do, you do. You know, you might have that 100000 in the bank to start the project, but, and it's, you know, that can quickly run out. Oh, super fast. Uh, super fast. And, and that's a commercial. scary thing. Yeah. Uh, the uh, physical demands of your job, and I don't mean your subs, but you personally, uh, and I'm not talking about you working out in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't count. Uh, but, it, you know, for those considering this, are, I mean, you have to climb on a lot of ladders. I mean, you got to climb into crawl spaces. I mean, what do you, what's your day like with physically? Well, for me, um, on a day-to-day, I always like to check into my subs, uh, and I kind of treat them as best as I can. So, yeah. I always ask them, you know, is there anything you need? Yeah. Uh, if they need it, you'll do it. I'm going to get it. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go get that part or I'm going to get that material for them. May take it off and we'll work it out at the end, but right. of their, uh, you know, their invoice, but that way they can keep working. The, yeah. the time is there and, and, and they're happier too. It's like, yeah. uh, it, uh, just like anybody in the subcontractor world or GC world, residential, however, it it's, you get kind of frustrated with yourself when you, you're going to, a job, you know, you did windows and, you know, you may have forgot the nails or the, the right screws to put up the window. Right. And then you're like, well, that's going to waste an old, you oh, know, half, whole, a, half a day. Hey, yeah. Mm-hmm. You have to run and get those and come back. And so that's why I try to yeah. take care of them. Uh, so that's loading, unloading material if I need to. or uh, But a lot of mine is uh, walking job sites. Um, yeah. And, yeah, I do go up and down ladders, and but that's just to inspect. And, yeah. Um, so it's not a huge physical demand. As far as with what you're doing, no, I wouldn't say. Um, well, it depends on the project size too. Um, yeah. If somebody's wanting something done um, quickly, uh, and if a subcontractor can't get there, uh, I'll step in and yeah. knock it out if I have the time. Right, right. Uh, and actually, I'm glad you brought the the sub side up um, because you don't have you currently don't have any employees. Yep. And so you're working with all subcontractors. Right. Um, and explain to our listeners that don't know uh, the difference between a subcontractor and employee. Uh, some contractor, um, you know, they have their own insurance, um, and they have their own complete business. It's a separate right. entity outside of a, you know, your own company. Yeah. Um, and so you get, and you get their proofs of insurance. I think correct. that's key. Yeah, right? That's very key. Uh, I want to mention that too, is, um, even if they're in their commercial realm, a uh, general liability and workers comp, yes. and it doesn't matter if they're a solo outfit. Yeah. It does that matter. Oh, really? Yeah. With the workman's comp? Yeah. Because you can exempt yourself uh, on that workman's comp. You but can, but you, but you want them to go the extra mile and okay. know that they're serious contractors. Oh, that's, that's, that's another enough. key is like, yeah. you know, okay, they're doing well. They can do that. They can afford workman's, workman's comp. comp. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's helped me out. I mean, yeah. I'm, I have a workman's comp. Yeah. And yeah, we do any, too. I don't yeah. have any employees. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, that's... That's really good advice. Yeah. Um, and then the, the employee, of course, is they, they get the W-2. They, yeah. they, they show up when you say. Yeah, exactly. Because you have, you have control over the, I don't mean that in a negative way, but, you know, you control their schedule of an employee. Yeah, yeah, there's, you, yeah the subcontractor, you know, you know, you can control when they're going to show up. and Right. Uh, and give, they can give you the time when they're going to leave. <laughs> right. So that's the balance yeah. act of that. Um, so, yeah, I mean. Employee, you can tell them, hey, you need to stay here t- till it's done, or you know, yeah. ten hours. Or, we need this done by yesterday, or however you want to. Yeah. Uh, um, so contractors uh, nowadays, they'll probably laugh at you if you're like, hey, oh, I need oh, you to yeah. stay here until it's done. And they're like, huh, I, you know, yeah, I'll see, see you, you later. See like, you tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> sure, see you Jeff, later, Whatever yeah. you say. say yeah, yeah. Uh, although I will say to our listeners, it's um, in a lot of you know employees are very expensive. You yeah. know, you got to think about payroll with with comes payroll comes payroll taxes. taxes. Um, subs, you don't deal with that. You yeah. just give them a 1099. They're responsible for all their own taxes. Yep. But that's why, listeners, you have to, those subs have to have insurance and workman's comp because yeah. those auditors will say, all right, well, if they're a sub, yep. let's see that insurance. Yeah. 
Uh, all right, so Jeff, specific dangers of your job. This is kind of funny. I asked this question one time uh, to to a general contractor, and he said cash flow. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's a good answer. It, it really is. <laughs> In the commercial, I, never realm, thought, it really I, is. I was thinking it's physically. But he's yeah. like, nah, man, it's nothing physical it's about a, it. It's yeah. cash flow. That's <laughs> yeah. that's the biggest danger. So, would you agree with that, or you got any like any anything well, outside of that? I mean. And on a commercial uh, job, you should be definitely be following OSHA rules, and so it yeah. all should be, you know, relatively safe. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that, that would be one of the biggest yeah, things. And, and depending on the business owner, that could be a danger, too. So Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. as far as them, like, not paying you on time, does that mean? Well, just not just that. I mean, um, th- they going in and, and on your job sites and, uh, you know, checking out the work, but then they – Go ahead and move stuff around and oh yeah yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and so, they'll do that kind of stuff oh too. absolutely yeah uh, if you're if any of the listeners out there and you're trying to do a commercial put that in your contract you know, yeah Keep the GC needs to un- know everyone that's on the premises oh that's good advice and what they need to also uh, have permission from you to be regardless to, if it's the owner yeah like hey I'm going by because you can you know if it's one of the it's one of those days that you like you look like the subcontractor quickly rushes out the door he doesn't really clean up and straighten his area up well you now you got someone walking in yeah maybe the electrical and some lights and you just have some work right. lights and it's barely it barely lit up and the balls off something it, with yeah. no rail on it yeah absolutely yeah i didn't think about that yeah so you yeah um and then another thing is like you know they gotta have their hard hats and they have yeah protective gear and all that before they work come through and that's room. all totally different from residential oh absolutely I, yeah now we're talking about this yeah. there is a big lot of big differences yeah. uh so osha i'm glad you brought that up now, i don't know what i know that's an acronym i don't know what it stands for do you know what osha stands <laughs> no. for all right well, we'll, we'll google, <laughs> google that later, later yeah. listeners that's homework okay, uh, yeah. google what osha stands for but i do know they are the the organization that oversees just over safety regulation correct uh and they can find you i know that if you if you stand at the top of a ladder which yeah. I've never done yeah. uh, at the very top never, of a step ever. ladder. Never, ever. Yeah. I mean, that's like, that can be like four grand. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? But but what's your advice on uh, just working with OSHA and, and making sure you're checking those those boxes? Uh, I, I, the best advice for me, even if you're a residential one, to, uh, if you're residential, I would say take the 10-hour OSHA. Oh, okay. Uh, if you're commercial, do the 30. Oh, okay. So there's classes. Yeah, that absolutely. They'll, they'll walk that's you another through. class that you should take. Yeah. This, this okay. is a, that's a good idea. You're not jumping into being a... You got to remember that you're a GC, so you're like the professor of the class. Yep, you're overseeing you ha- everything. everything. Yeah, so you have to understand all the aspects of it. Yeah, and there's a lot of rules and regulations with yeah. OSHA. I mean, oh, there's a yeah. lot. You're st- they find you for stuff you wouldn't even think about. Yeah, that frayed cord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you uh, just that, that just was laying on the ground and just so happened to get cut that day. You yeah, didn't see it. Yeah. Yeah, and it and it's expensive. Yeah. Like I said, I mean, I've you know, and knock on wood, I've yeah. yet to get fined by them. But I've yeah. talked to a lot of guys over the years, and it's just, I mean, it can be thousands and thousands yeah. of dollars. Um, all right, uh, tech influence, uh, and then also, you know, I, I have influence of automation. I'm not sure if that applies, but it, but in your world of commercial GCing, um, what would you say some of the the bigger tech influence components have been recently? Uh, the project manager software. Oh, okay. It's been growing rapidly. It's getting cheaper in yeah. the commercial realm. You can spend thousands of dollars a month. Uh, oh, wow. Per running, month? Yep. Oh, wow. Running the tech that it takes to run the entire job. Um, and now it's finally getting a more and more affordable. Right. Where uh, somebody, because I'm a small GC, so um, someone like me that I can actually utilize that software and Right. put it to good use and explain to me t- i know project management but how does that like how does that software work i mean what you hop on the program how does it help you what does it do um a lot of them is a communication platform okay between your subcontractors you and the owners oh, or okay. clients oh, okay um that's cool but they also have the scheduling and the gantt charts and um, so you know who's going to be when, where, yep. all that kind of stuff. And the owner at any time can get on there and look those up and oh, that's say, cool. okay, that's here's the schedule. Yeah. Or if the subcontractor, you know, message you on there and they change their schedule, like something happened, delay in the delivery. Yeah. Uh, something out of their hands. Well, you know, that's just, a, that's a ripple effect. Yes. And if you have the software, that's already updated. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that being a huge factor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So, Is yeah. there a certain brand or a brand that you like or anything you'd recommend to our listeners? Um, a builder trend and co-construct. Both okay. of those are kind of pretty good. Yeah. They're, they're pretty good. They're re- relatively affordable and they're, 
I wouldn't say they're more based on commercial, but they have good uh, project management software yeah. that, that you can utilize for commercial. Oh, okay. Now I assume residential GCs can use the same thing. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Yep. I guess I guess really anyone yeah. running a business. Yeah. If you, can it's do a that. project management software. Yeah, just so. project management mm-hmm. software. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good advice. Yeah. Uh, all right. So give me one pro, one con of being a commercial GC. Uh, cash flow. <laughs> there you go. That's perfect. Pro and con right there. <laughs> there. Done and done. No. Yeah, there you go. No, that's, that's <laughs> fine. That's, that's your answer. <laughs> no. I accept it. No. Um, so con would be your cash flow or that, is that your pro? Um, the pro would be the, you know, the cat, the money. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah, it's good. very awarding because you are waiting. Yeah. You know, just think about if you're, uh, waiting in a long line to Whatever you like, all right. Like a beer to a soda to ice cream, all right. There's a long line when you and you patiently wait. When you get up there, it kind of tastes a little bit better. Yeah, it's yeah, a little bit sweeter. Yeah, yeah. Um, as long as there's some left that, by the that, time that, you yeah, get there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we're all out of ice, ice cream. cream oh, yeah. man, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where to go? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, so if you wait and then get that reward at the end, yeah. I, I, that's kind of bittersweet in my mind. Yeah, yeah. no, I uh, see that. Um, the con is. Um, you have to work for your leads quite a bit. Yeah. Um, you almost need if you can afford and have the payroll to get your own salesman. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. uh, and get them out there working. Which uh, that's its own headache. It is. Um, I'm being all kinds of things right now. Salesman oh, yeah. To, yeah. 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 You wear all the hats. Yeah. Um, including the hard hat sometimes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, that's good. No, that's good. And and also too, I, I want to ask like. Do you find um, a reward in the tangible? Like, you know, and I say this a lot, and, and my wife even said the other day, I said that she's like, that doesn't make any sense. Quit saying that. I was like, well, let me explain. Uh, but, you know, like going from you show up and there's nothing there, yeah. and all of a sudden in X amount of months you have a brewery. Yeah. I mean, is do you, and I know the money's good and you like what you do, but is that a big reward for you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's uh kind of what I'm in it for. Yeah. You know, you're changing the skyline one yeah. billion at a time. Yeah, yeah. And it's and I tell you, I'm glad you said that because another thing that, um, you know, the more and more people I talk to and interview on this show, you know, say that. They're like, I don't do this for the money. Yeah. Money's good. Yeah. Money's really good in trades. Yeah. It's like, but that's not why I'm here. Yeah. And I, and I think that's key in that, especially to our younger listeners, you know, don't chase a big salary. Yeah. I mean, if you love what you do, and you get in the trades, that big salary will come. Um, yeah. Yeah, but don't do it just for the money. Um, all right, so advice on – we'll jump into your history here in one second. But um, you have a, a business partner in, in this – this is a little over my head, but in the development side, the redevelopment yeah. side. Yeah. And I'll let, you, I'll let you explain on what that is real quick. But uh, advice on having a business partner. Or actually, I'll let you explain on what – even what you guys work on together and then how you guys uh, get along. So – uh, my business partner and I, we have a redevelopment company, and we take uh, dilapidated buildings and redevelop them, adaptive use, uh, to something else that they were never were before. All right. Um, so that's what we're in it for. Um, your question about the partnership. Yeah, like just, just advice on having a partner and getting along. Uh, with any partnership, whether it be personal or business, communication. Yeah. That's that's ultimately thing. Um, and then schedule meetings. Um, yeah, because you can have the greatest business partner in the world and they're great at what they do on that side of the business and you're great at what you do on right. the other side of the business. But if you don't communicate and know what each other's doing, there might be some resentment that builds up and uh, you're like, what have you been doing? You know, this whole week, <laughs> no. I've been out here sweating, know. you know, swinging a hammer and, yeah. Yeah. and you're in the office. Like, what are you doing? Playing games? You know, yeah. um, and set up, have that meeting, uh, and, uh, go over action items. You yeah. Know, hey, this is what our goals, our many goals for this week are going to be yeah. for this major goal that we're trying to hit as, you know, as yeah. partners in the business. No, that makes sense. Yeah. And I assume you guys do that. Yep. We and do you, that. And I know you're, yep. I know your business partner is a super smart and successful guy. Yeah. And, and um, you all have a really good ish relationship going yeah, on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and now also, Jeff, <clears throat> you have rental, some rental properties, right? Uh, I did. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So a little bit of advice on that and, and why did you move out of that realm? Um, so a little bit of advice about that is don't always jump in at the cheapest thing. Okay. That's, that's good advice. Uh, yes. You, you might have this amount of money and it's like, okay, I can go ahead and pay that off and get that building, but it might be ran down. Now you need construction loan. Yeah. 
to, to remodel it and stuff. So, so did you just do rentals commercial or did you do, uh, no residents? No, it was just, it was residential. All right. Uh, yeah. It's been a while. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, yeah. And what outside of, outside of, um, don't don't put all your 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 eggs in one basket. Anything? Any other advice for those considering jumping into the rental business? Um, systems. Yeah. Uh, with every great business, they have good systems. Yeah. Um, before you, if you're in the construction trade or you're going into it, and then you also want to do a rental, it's that's two different businesses. You need to make sure that you have the one business running pretty smoothly. Yeah. Before you can jump into it. Yeah. That's, yeah. 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 Oh, I did the same thing, man. Yeah. I had, I, I, I dabbled in the rental world for a while. I, yeah. had, I had, I think three at, at, at my most, I had three rental properties. Yeah. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, it was a nightmare. It traumatized me. I had to <laughs> evict people. Yeah. I let them, I let them go over on their rent. I didn't, I didn't have a system. Yeah. I had no system. Yeah. I just, I was like, Oh, everyone tells me to get rental property. Yeah. So I did it. And the, somehow the bank loaned me, you know what I mean? Yeah. You, they'll, they'll, and, and that was back when, you know, they, they didn't even like check your credit. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah it's just yeah. like, yeah, sure. You want a house? That's here you go. Real, yeah. And uh, that was awful. I hated <laughs> it. And uh, I was like, I'll never do it again. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's jump into, uh, uh, we'll, we'll save your history for last because it's super interesting. Uh, but, but jumping into, if someone wanted to get into this world of GCing, um, I feel like you're going to say, although I don't know if you did this, but I feel like you'll say work for a company first. But if someone wants to become a, a commercial GC and they're going to go work for someone, what are some of the things they should look for, questions to ask, those kind of things? Um, if they're going to work for another GC, um, ask everyone all the questions. Right. Any question you can think of, ask. Right. Uh, don't be afraid. Don't have pride. Um, you, you need to learn. Yeah. The, the best way to to tell somebody what to do is actually know how to do it all yourself. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good advice. Uh -huh. um, how can you in, go behind someone and say, yeah, you did good work? How do you know they did good work? Yeah, you don't even know what good work looks it like. It might look good, but yeah. maybe what they use is completely wrong. Yeah. Uh, and now did you you did did you work for, a, like, how did you get started? I mean, did you? Uh, so, no, I never worked for a commercial GC. Yeah, I didn't think you did. Um, uh, I started my own company when I was 16, 17, and so um, I – already knew a lot of people in the business and I was that guy. I yeah. asked a lot of questions. Yeah. I like the, it's kind of funny is it's a project manager, a construction manager or a commercial GC. It's, um, they pull up to the job site and they, you know, look around and they talk to some of their subcontractors and they walk away. And that was very intriguing to me that they, they did that. And when I start asking them questions, like how much they knew of the job, they knew everything about yeah. they. They possibly could. But be. does it seem overwhelming to you to like, you know, like, like I know my trades quite, yeah. quite well, yeah. but I don't know all of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you need to know all, all of them. them. Yeah. I mean, is that overwhelming? Um, it takes years. I mean, yeah. you're, there, there's always new processes and procedures and yeah. stuff that's coming out for all of that. And I got to keep up with that. Yeah. Cause there is one thing is like, you can be an amateur and do stuff and do it for fun. It's, you know, amateurs to love. Yeah. Uh, and then, you can be good enough to where someone pays you and now you become a professional. <laughs> right. But if you yeah. want to be an expert, you yeah. got to stay ahead of the game. Yeah. You got to know what every single subcontractor is talking about. Yeah. Uh, whether you need to go and do like all the mechanicals and electrical right, yeah. and you don't have to all know. that and be licensed, that's a different yeah, story. Yeah, you don't have to do all that. But, but you know, you, learn about the process. Yeah. Uh, you know, and HVAC, you know, learn about negative airflow and yeah. all the pressures that it takes to, to do a system correctly and, um, and you know, electrical, you need to know all your loads and can that wire hold all this load to this point? You right. Know? Not burn the house, house, burn yeah. the house down. Right. Yeah. Or will it drop the amps? Uh, all right. Know? Yeah. You know, you're running a thousand foot cord and you know that you need to yeah. know that yeah, by yeah. the time it can actually power a saw, you know, it's at, not at the end of yeah. a thousand foot building. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, and, but though, that's a testament testimonial yeah. to the traits Yeah. because it aggravates me to no end when people think that this is for uneducated last resort yeah. concepts, you know, and it's just like, you think about that. think about how much you've learned yeah. in all the years that you've done this. And, and the top on top of that, you're never going to stop learning. No. You know what I mean? Yeah, Cause everything changes. Yep. Technology changes. Buildings change. Anyway, so it's, I won't go, go on that soapbox, <laughs> but uh, I think that's a good testimony to the yep. trades. Um, so if someone wanted to do what Jeff Walston did um, at, at 16, 17, Hey, I want to get out on my own. What is a little bit of advice 
uh, apart from going downtown <laughs> and getting your license uh, on just getting started as a GC. And I know we covered some of the networking things, so we don't have to get into that, but just tools needed, uh, you know, types of insurance, those kind of things. Um, so to start out, I would uh, seek out a mentor. Yes, that's that's good advice. Yeah, that, that would be, um, that's like, that's almost as much as you can say it, and I hate saying this, is the easy button. Yeah. Guys, no, there's nothing wrong with ladies that. Ladies and gents, like, get a mentor. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of them um, will be willing to do it because they want to pass that on. Yeah. People to like to be a to mentor. The, yeah, to the next generation, and yeah. they might even do it for free. Yeah. Um, and you get out there, and they can kind of guide you. Trust me, if someone's put 50 years as a GC, yeah, you're not going to learn it all from a book. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Not and you shouldn't. Years. Yeah. You shouldn't try. But they're, they're going to tell you, hey, don't do this. They're going to give you all the do nots. Yeah. Which are way more important. Important, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Because <laughs> yes. when you're in the, the GC game in any aspect, especially commercial, um, uh, a do not could, you know, oh, hurt save you. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, save you thousands, thousands. of dollars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, or millions. Or millions. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> think, think higher, Clellan. Yeah. Think higher. Uh, the uh, So is, do you need a lot of – is there a lot of overhead for you? I mean, if someone wanted – I mean, I don't – I wouldn't think. It'd probably a truck – it's way more than you think. Okay, so what what is some of the overhead? I know insurance. Yeah, insurance is a big one, so it's going to definitely go up when you're de- dealing with commercial. Yeah. It, it's in the thousands, not the hundreds. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's good to know. Yeah. Because you can get a um, residential policy for like 300 bucks yeah. for, you know, half yeah. a million or something <laughs> for the year. Uh, all right, so so insurance is more expensive. Yeah, uh, in all aspects. So your general liability, workman's comp, your vehicle insurance. Okay. Uh, if you want to get a building all of that's all right so a uh, lot of that and do you need a lot of tools uh for a, a gc the true gc that's uh just doing subs and stuff no. not really yeah um i would say if you know the people and you have uh and you know a good project manager to work underneath of you 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 don't need a iPad, a phone, and a laptop, yeah. and a good personality. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. and and, uh, and uh, tenacious. Yeah, uh, mindset. Uh, so it sounds lots like. Or go ahead. I was just gonna say, lots of patience. Lots of patience. Well, that's good advice. So it sounds like more so, in your world, if someone wants to get started, it's more find a mentor, uh, and get educated. Get <clears throat> definitely get educated, um, and then network. Ne- yes. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. Network, network is uh, one of the biggest. So mentor, education, and network. All right, there you go. And I know every. Some of these guys, especially if you're listening to this and you're in high school and you're coming out and wanting to go into trades and you're like, ugh, education. Yeah. But take it from me, you definitely need to get educated. Oh, yeah, never stop learning. Yeah. I mean, that, that's key. I mean, that, that's, you know, you don't need a college degree yeah. to, to just to keep learning. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's jump back into your, your past because you've done all sorts of cool things in South America. You were building dental labs, um, role models. Um, did you have a mentor? Uh, not really. Not really. Um, that I didn't call them my mentors. I I was always the person that asked questions. I yeah. still to this day, if I'm on a job site and uh, there's several GCs involved and there's an older gentleman, you know, I go up, start a conversation with them, and yeah. you know, because you're smart. Yeah, and talk. You know? you know, hey, you know, what's, you know, just ask them. What's the difference between in the 1980s that there is now? <laughs> yeah. That'll apart start all from, kinds apart of stuff. from hairstyle. That'll get them talking, <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, and then start asking questions about like, hey, what's your, you know, what's your advice on this, or what would you do here, or what? Yeah, if you could go back and change this spot. What would you do? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it's yeah, and I didn't, man. I never. I, I same way. I started my business out a week out of high school. I didn't. I never really got that mentor. I, but I'm same way as you are. I just ask lots of questions. Yeah, you know, and it's just I've even had people say, "Damn, man, you ask a lot of questions." Yeah. But it's a good thing. Yeah, it mm-hmm. is. I mean, that's the only way you're going to learn unless you try to pick up a book. But I'm telling yeah. you, you're, that's not all in a book. No, it's, it's not. It's not all in one book. Yeah. Uh-uh. It, to get one one aspect of commercial, you're dealing with several books. Yeah. Just in one one field. Yeah, yeah. So speaking of books, what kind of student were you in school? Did you like school? Um. Uh, it was okay. Yeah. But yeah. I, I did it. Uh, so you just kind of went through the motions. Did you know, cause you didn't go to college. You, you went straight out of high school and into your business. Did you know, like from an early age, man, this is just the, the traditional style of learning is just not for me. Traditional style. <laughs> I kind of want to dive into that. So the traditional style to me, um, 
makes great employees. Yeah. And I knew I would never be a great employee. <laughs> yeah, that's beautifully said. That, that's kind of like, yeah, yeah, I heard a statistic one time. They said that the valedictorians are kind of that way. They're, yeah. you know, they're really, really, really smart, but they'll never get to that top entrepreneurial level because there's there's no systems there. there yeah. <laughs> it's all abstract. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so you knew early on you're going to work for yourself your whole life. Oh, yeah. 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 So did that, did that scare you? Like when you got out in the real world, like, man, I got to fend for myself or I'm going to starve? No, um, again, at an early age, I start, I didn't know, unbeknownst back then, I was already making connections through networking. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. I was a kid that shake your hand and say, hey, you know, what's your name? <laughs> yeah. What did you do for a living? Yeah. And then that's how I made connections. And um, So, yeah, let's jump into, all right, so you, you left high school, um, you, you went to South America. And you got on into the trades. You're building these dental labs. Yeah, just kind of walk us through that life. Central and South America. Um, so there could be two or three projects. And when I say two or three projects, it's in two or three different countries right. going on. Um, so a lot of communication and scheduling and uh, a lot of travel. Yeah. And how did you find, how did you land that job? Uh, so I was working for another company as a, a construction manager um, and LinkedIn is oh, yeah. where they reached out. And that's another thing, too. If in the business world and commercial, a big aspect is LinkedIn. That's a that's okay. the, the, the new tech that's coming up. Wow. That's that's how you can get leads. Yeah. Uh, you can uh, get a mentor well, out that's there. That's good to know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I highly recommend, hey, if right. you're in high school, go on and put your thing in. Like, hey, I'm in this high school. And put a LinkedIn up there. Wow. That's good. So do you, are you still active? With as, as busy as you are now, do you still mess with LinkedIn? You oh, still absolutely. Play? Okay. Yeah. More so than other social media platforms. Yeah. Okay. But that's more specific to commercial with what you're doing is what you're saying. For me, yeah. um, I got a lot more leads on LinkedIn than yeah. I have uh, any other s- social aspect ever. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. All right. So they found you on LinkedIn. They shipped you to Central and South America. You're bouncing around country to country. <laughs> yeah. uh, so what was your life like there? I mean, what was your day to day? What did uh, you learn? It's a lot of learning. Um, yeah. You, you learned know, Spanish. Spanish. Yeah. yeah. Well, I knew some, but uh, yeah. not like <laughs> not, not like, like you do now. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, uh, when it comes to speaking it, I'm not very fluent, but uh, like writing emails and oh, okay. text and stuff like that, yeah, I, can, yeah. I can get what I need to say across. Uh, so yeah, that that learned a lot, and it yeah. learned ways of uh, different countries how they handle certain things. Yeah. yeah. So give us some examples of that, as far as culturally, business wise, from, from um, one country to the next. So depends. In, so in, in Chile, I was down there. Um, they're very giving, to where they might have a high executive position or in a business, but they're going to make sure that their workers are taken care of because they know if they take care of them their workers are going to take care of higher ups in the business. Right. So do you think it's more kind of like a servant leadership style? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Some more humility. Oh, for for sure. Um, So do you find that in, in general central and South America more so than America? Yeah. Or United States. It's, I'll look at central and South America. The best way to explain it is people. If you, I mean, no matter what your age are, it's like what America was, um, in the fifties. Yeah. And what I mean by that, not the racial things don't go there. Right. What yeah. I mean by that is the respect towards your elders. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and that's what they still have. That's kind of like the Asian cultures. Yeah. You know, they, they, you know, yeah, we're quick to like throw our people in nursing homes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, wait, you're 61. I'll get out <laughs> yeah, of here. Yeah. yeah. Um, so down there, they still have that in the, the work field and in, right. in their okay. careers. So that's interesting. Yeah. Um, and when you left, what, did, were you sad? I mean, you know, like, you know, were you sad to see that kind of culture? It was a great yeah. journey. Yeah. It, yeah, that's a great journey. Yeah. It, it just needed to, I needed to come back. And yeah. now I'm uh, even more grateful for yeah. being here. And Well, and you think about all, like, the stuff we take for granted here. Absolutely. You know, running water and. Uh, and uh, one good thing is Santiago, Chile, uh, most of them don't have water heaters. Yeah. Oh, wow. Is so, it yeah, just it's, for climate, or they just don't have they them? They just don't have them. They just don't have them. I know, man. You think about that. So, yeah, I took a lot of coach hours. Yeah. So. Yeah, that, that's a reality yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but, you know, you think about, I mean, just plumbing. Yeah. You know, I remember talking to the Jason Disney, the, the the plumber at Iroquois High School and in Jefferson County Public Schools. They have, you know, they have 125 different languages yeah. and, and international students from all over the place. And it's just amazing. He's, I mean, kids... D- 
I mean, he said he had students that were almost afraid to go into a bathroom because yeah. they didn't know, they didn't understand. And like, there's like, there's, you know, they'll walk two hours one way to get a bucket of water. Yeah. And just, he's like, no, you just flip that, that nozzle there. And, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's crazy. And yeah. it's, it's gratitude for one. And also we need to give back and, oh, and, for and sure. help, help those out there. Yeah. Uh, so Jeff, we, we're about, about out of time here, but uh, a couple more important questions. Uh, what do you think your trade has taught you about life? Um, humility. Yeah. 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 Um, that's important, man. Yeah, you, you it know, is. That, that's, that goes way beyond money. Yeah. You know, that's, and I think that feeds into gratitude. Yeah. You know, um, the greatest thing for me is the network. I love the network and, and meet new people. Uh, you never know who you're shaking. Yeah, I know. Hands. Yeah, you, never you don't. Know. You never know who they know and what they have and the information they can give you. Um, so, you know, don't be the one out there that you think that you know it all and that you've done it all and yeah. have a little humility. Yeah. Because the person that you're probably shaking your hand has probably done twice as much. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's good <laughs> advice. That's really good advice. Uh, and so, it's, in speaking of advice, what would you say you have an 8- and 10-year-old boy and a girl um, that you are now cycling around the neighborhood with? Uh-huh. Uh, what do you tell them, if anything, about the trades? Uh, hard work. Yeah. Um, so do they re- I assume, I mean, you're, you're, you're their dad, so I'm sure they follow you around and, and love what yeah. you do, but do they acknowledge, you know, more so, hey, dad works with his hands and he's out there in the field? Or, uh, Yeah, they do. I, I teach them at home on projects at home and stuff and kind of explain to them, like, this is what I have other people do who are better than me at it because yeah. that's why I pay them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. so, uh, yeah, you know, when you walk up to somebody, have respect to them. They, they yeah. might just be a painter, but you know what? They, they're they getting that straight line, and it took them 30 yeah. years to do that. Yeah, I know, man. That's so. what I'm trying to teach my daughters. Look people in the eye yeah. when you talk to them. Yeah. You know, like put your phone down. Yeah. You know, that's just some simple things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, well, I know you're a great dad. Um, entrepreneurial advice. You are a great entrepreneur. What would you give uh, uh, some of your advice out there for listeners, young and old? Uh well, both. Uh, I think young it came with wisdom and living. And they probably realize now that uh, systems, yeah, business yeah. structure, systems um, is a key if you want to be an entrepreneur and, and and come out. Yeah. Um, and humility, another thing. Um, understand that you might be great at something, but there's always someone who could do better. Yeah. Um, and when you find that person, tell them, you know, hey, I want you to do this for me, and then pay them well. To do it, because yeah. guess what? They're going to probably be able to do it twice as fast as you. Yeah. Oh, be yeah. more productive in yeah. the end. Um, and that's on the employee side. Same thing with subcontractors. Yeah. You know, I appreciate them. Yeah, yeah, as you should. And, you know, yeah. build a good team. Yeah. A good, good, you know, don't never be the smartest person in the room. Correct. I know that. I've yeah. learned that. I'm not, <laughs> that's, typically, I don't have that problem, <laughs> typically. Uh, and I'd also think, Jeff, uh, I'm going to, uh, you'd mentioned this earlier, and, and I feel like you're very organized. Uh, but I feel like especially with what you do, entrepreneurial, but being a GC, is you, you have to be organized. Uh, would you say that would be the case? Uh, yeah, or you need an assistant. Or assistant, right. Either way. Someone just, has to be organized uh, yeah. at some point. It's somewhere. Usually, there's so many boxes you got to check throughout yeah. your day-to-day. I think it would be mind-boggling. Yeah. Uh, all right, second to last question. <clears throat> You're a good leader. We'll give our listeners some good leadership advice. Uh, be a servant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take, take care of the people below you, um, and if you do that, like, they'll work harder for you. Yeah. Um, and actually get to know them more. Yeah. Um, Treat them like people. Yeah. When I was running other com- companies, I would, uh, you know, I had three, 30 to 40 people that I was managing, so I wanted to know all their personalities. Yeah. Because maybe, you know, this person's working in this spot, say they're sweeping floors, um, and if they're high energetic, you know, they're going to go all crazy and, and it's not going to be very detailed and they're yeah. going to get it done. Well, you know, that might not be their job. They might be sad or depressed or yeah. unhappy with it. Yeah. Um, and try to help, you know, guide them to Pick a different, different, uh, avenue yeah, yeah. in the business. Um, that's what I've done in the past and it seems to work yeah. great. Well, it's kind of like that you hear all the time, you know, uh, you know, get the right people on your bus, but also yeah. make sure they're sitting in the right seats. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you, you definitely know, you can't I just mean, fill up your bus. And and I would also say that too is uh, if you're you know going to be an entrepreneur, learn yourself, learn yeah. what type of personality you are. Yeah. 
and then get the people that aren't your personality. Yeah, that's really good advice. So, yeah. uh, because it doesn't work. It's like yin and yang, right? Yeah. You got to have that harmony and that balance. Yeah, kick, yeah. So yeah. if you're a real go-getter, and uh, but you're all over the place, not very detail-oriented, you need someone who can yeah. calm down, has the patience, and is detail-oriented. Yeah, no, that's great advice. Well, it's but, funny because I, I was talking to this guy. He, it was free, but he did this like cultural index yeah. thing. And there's uh, listeners, there's all types of things out there yeah. to figure out personality types and who needs to be where. Um, but I am like with this show, I love this, yeah. this podcast. It's a big passion of mine, but I am not, I don't do data. Like I don't research. I don't like yeah. people like, Oh, you need more information. I'm like, yeah, it's not me. <laughs> and it's just like, and that's what that guy was telling yeah. you. He came up he's like, all right, you're not a researcher. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, nah, I'm not. I'm a, I like, I, I like asking questions. Yeah. I was like, well, that's why I have the experts on the show. Oh, you yeah, know, yeah. I just, I just <laughs> ask questions. Uh, all right. Speaking of uh, last question, uh, and I, I tell this to my GCs, you know, you, you, you know them all. So I feel like this is a good question. If you had to choose another trade, but more for you, a specific trade, what would like it be? Out within the construction trades? Or? Correct. Yeah. Any, any kind of trade. Well, you know, any kind of trade. I am mean, even like, I'm starting to learn like, even like, you know, barbers or trade. Yeah. You know, so any trade. And you can't say concrete. Because you've already done oh, concrete. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking that from you. Okay. Um, man, that's a good question. What is anything in medical a trade? Uh, Would you consider that trade. Yes, I do know. Um, like uh, dent uh, the the dental world because I'm learning this from Prosser. They consider that a trade. You know, like dental hygienist, those kind of things. Yeah. Um, what uh, about uh, like, like EMS and all the? Are you considering any of those trades? Yeah, sure. I think so. So EMT, Ooh, that'd be a tough job. Um, I, I mean, I don't know if I'd want that. I, I was just trying to clarify exactly yeah, okay. how, how <laughs> narrow you want to. There's get not to this. really a wrong, wrong answer. answer. You want to be a Well, because uh, if it was outside of trades, I would want to be a surgeon. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, I'll uh, give you that. Yeah, I like it's. Although it's about man, it's yeah, it, yeah. it's still uh, you know mechanical and, yeah. and building blocks, <laughs> but now it's cellular. Yes, I don't. I could not be a surgeon. So, uh, um, but yeah, that's. If I had to choose, yeah. All right, if well, you good. consider that a trade. All right. Well, that, that'll be but, your, our next podcast. Yeah. <laughs> when, when you when you learn heart surgery, oh, we'll yeah, have yeah. you on the show. Let me get a book uh, real quick. Get a mentor. That's right. Yeah, get a mentor. Yeah, definitely get a mentor on that. that yeah. yeah. That's not saying you just go out <laughs> and start learning, it, yeah. right? Yeah. Not on me anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, but all right, man. Well, you're awesome. This yeah, is a great, thanks. great, great show. This is a wealth of information. I hope our listeners picked up on it. I, I really, you really I did really help me see the the difference between residential and commercial yeah. way more so than I thought. Um, and it's a totally different world. Yeah. And I think that's really interesting. And, uh, but you were making that world and ours better for being here. You're an awesome person. I very, very much Thanks. appreciate it. So are you. Appreciate and, uh, and listeners, that concludes another show. And we hope this helps you realize the importance of a final walkthrough when considering all of the options available to you in the trades. Another huge thank you to Jeff Walston, our wonderful listeners. Never stop learning. Please subscribe, leave reviews, and reach out to, to us to see who you want to have on the show. Message us on Why the Trades Facebook page. Be safe out there, and I'll see you soon.